Welcome back to City Line. With me is whew, somebody who occupies a big space in my heart. I'm talking about the executive director of the Rainbow Center, Mr. Troy Christensen. Welcome back, my dear. Thank you, Amanda. You always look so fabulous. I look like I'm living in the middle of COVID and you look like you're um, New Year's Eve in New York. Ah. <laughs> Gosh, you know what? I'm going to tuck that inside and put that in the maybe next year I will be. Uh, so thank you for that. You just don't see me when I'm in my pajamas. So how's that? So Troy, um, the pandemic, speaking of people in pajamas, this pandemic, it's taken a toll on us. How are you and the Rainbow Center doing with all this? Well, it's been, we've had to change how we do pretty much every part of our business. Um, our gala this last year was virtual and Pride was a hybrid of live and virtual and it likely will be this coming year. Um, Tacoma Pride, which is, um, you know, we're used to having 15 to 20,000 people in a big street festival. And instead, if we're lucky by July 10th, we might be able to have some gatherings of 50 at some local establishments, but we definitely will not have the big street festival. Um, so we'll do a virtual parade again this year, like we did last year, and we'll have points of pride the entire month, but especially on July 10th throughout Pierce County. So when, when you talk about July 10th, and then we do the math and think it's, it's, it's six months away, um, it just seems like, how can that possibly be? And how can you possibly have another pride that's virtual? So what have you learned and what do you have planned that you can kind of tease us with? Well, um, last year we were really in the, in the depths of this. I mean, we still are today as well, but the, the hope is as, as much as vaccines are coming into Washington state, that by July, there may be the opportunity to dine in again. There may be the opportunity to, um, you know, to maybe have a, um, you know, for the mix to have a party outside in the evening. Um, there may be the opportunity for families to get out and check out the different points of pride and see who's supporting the work that we do and see who's supporting our community um, as, you know, living who we authentically are. And so I don't know that we have any new tips for this year other than um, some things that we've learned about how things work electronically so that we don't have slowdowns and, and pauses. Um, we'll definitely be hardwired and not Wi-Fi. Um, things like that we've learned. Um, we also, I would say from last year, we learned that the community supports Tacoma Pride regardless of whether it's a big street festival or if it's in points of pride. And um, that was a, um, a really scary moment for us and a really um, joyous moment when we found out how much the businesses still wanted to support this. Oh, absolutely. And boy, when you said Wi-Fi versus hardwire, you are a virtual warrior to know the difference between those two <laughs> and what they can do to virtual programming. Yes. <laughs> um, speaking of some virtual programming, you have some classes for youth happening recently. Can you tell us more about that? Sure. Well, our education team has a new program called Band of Colors. This is funded by Tacoma Creates, and it is youth-centered theater-based programming for ages 18 and under for any youth under 18. You don't have to be LGBTQ. In fact, it's sort of designed to help everyone um, develop more who they are and have a better understanding of other people and how to support them. So we're offering three different classes that occur each month. Page to Stage is for eight and under, and it happens on the fourth Saturday of each month. And they use a different children's book each month to explore themes and character play. The second class we offer is for nine to 12 year olds called I'm Gonna Be Somebody. And it takes place on the fourth Tuesday of each month and in this class, we focus on creating a safe space for young people to explore different characters to create play. And the third class is for 13 and up. And this is a performance writing class called scripting, self-scripting. And it's offered the fourth Monday and Wednesday of each month. And in this class, we have participants write about themselves. It's our hope that all of these classes will help 
these youth foster in an, um, a sense of self in a safe environment. And we are excited to be able to offer these um, virtually um, now and, the, and to do them for free because of the, the funding we get through Tacoma Creates. And even when we do um, move these to live, they will still be free to the community. So we're, we're very excited to have that resource available. You know, as you were talking about this, Troy, I was thinking about our youth and how difficult uh, this pandemic has been for many reasons for our youth. But one of the things that comes to mind is their ability to gather and to learn from each other and to sit down and talk and talk about their day and their differences has been taken away. Now, yes, we can do it virtually, but that's not the same, but these classes feel like they really get in and they start to work on those pieces that are missing as we learn to live together and also love together. So good on the Rainbow Center for doing this. Thank you. So also one of my favorite places to hang out is Alma Mater. I love their scrambled eggs. They have this wonderful outdoor eating area. Plus, when things are up and running, they are an amazing venue. You have a, a partnership called Caring with Pride. Tell us what that is. Yes, um, so when the pandemic first hit, our advocacy program, in addition to moving many things virtually, they, got, they sat down and brainstormed and said, what does the community need right now? And a lot of people were losing their incomes, especially the lowest paid workers. And so they decided to put together um, a weekly giveaway. And so people come to the center um, one at a time and they get essentials like um, toiletries, gloves, socks, hats, shoes. Um, and then we were also um, getting food from Northwest Harvest. And so we were providing them boxes of uh, fresh produce and some non-perishable foods. When Alma Mater heard about this, they approached us and said, hey, we'd like to serve a hot meal, fresh hot meal to 100 people every week through your Caring with Pride. And we said, great, we love that idea. So they have been doing that for probably seven, eight months now. And it's a big expense to them when they like all restaurants, and I know they're bigger than a restaurant, but you know most of what they do um, that they earned money from, they're not doing right now. So knowing that they're supporting their community during their hardship really means a great deal to us. And then also partway through the year, Pierce County um, released some funding to help people um, who were facing eviction when the moratorium ends catch up on their rent. And so in the fourth quarter of this year, our advocacy team administered um, $300,000 worth of eviction rental assistance prevention to um, almost 100 households to keep them from, help them not be evicted when the moratorium ends. Um, and we were very trepidatious about administering that much money in rental assistance, given the size of our organization, because we're fairly small. And um, we did it in record time. And we're really happy that we got the experience to do that. Well, and you also, because it's in the wind and all over social media, you also received a Housing Hero Award from the city of Tacoma. So congratulations for your vision and for your generosity. That is huge. I mean, housing is everything um, for regardless of who you are. And whether we're in a pandemic or we're not, certainly in a pandemic and to not have a house is is just un, unthinkable. Um, so how fabulous that the little rainbow center that could steps in and saves the day. Yes, and it was really just three advocacy staff that did all that work. That is they have really worked their tails off. And you know, it's it's an it's a that really exhilarated exhaustion you feel when you accomplish something really big. And so while they're tired, they're happy that we've been able to do this. And it looks like there may be more coming in 2021. You and your team are, are, are outstanding, Mr. Troy. Um, since Biden took office, it appears that some of the damage 
that occurred to LBG, LBGTQ rights over the past four years have been reversed. That was one of his campaign promises. He, he has done that. Um, do you have any important updates for us that are kind of coming down the chute? Yes. Within the first 100 days of Biden being in office, um, there is a an intent to move the Equality Act forward through the House, the Senate, and then to the president. It has been presented multiple times when there was not a majority Democrat um, in in the House and the Senate, and it has not passed. Um, Biden is saying he is going to move this forward in his first 100 days. What this will mean is that in addition to um, the Supreme Court ruling last year that made it illegal to discriminate in employment based upon sexual orientation and gender identity, additional categories would be added through the Equality Act for housing, access to health care, credit, jury service, um, and many other things where currently it's legal to discriminate. And this will, I mean, it will make a huge difference to the lives of the LGBTQ communities in our Absolutely. country. And it will give us one more thing to virtually celebrate in terms of pride. Absolutely. What's next for the Rainbow Center? What's coming up? Well, um, as I said, this the Band of Colors education program and pride. And this year, we are really going to be pushing hard on legislative advocacy at the federal level. Um, there are some things that are in the works at the state level as well. But at the federal level, um, we can band together with the centers across the country and make sure that we have the movement that we can make right now while we have the majority in the House and the Senate and a Democratic president. And so that's going to be a big focus of our work this year. I love that. It is always just so wonderful to have you in my kitchen and to be in your office. <laughs> and uh, you continue to break new ground and to uh, hold the mantle uh, for LGBTQ. IA2 here in Pierce County. So thank you, thank you so much for that. And I want to have you back on in the spring because the spring is three more months closer to Pride and we're going to need an update, okay? Wonderful. As always, thank you, Amanda. You're more than welcome, my dear. We have much more to come on CityLine. We'll be right back after this quick break. <laughs> 